<laughs> I'm talking about a different thing. Uh, but so my, my uh, work specifically focused on demand side ancillary services, uh, which is what can the, the, um, the consumers do? How, how can they change their behavior, their power consumption to try and help the grid? And uh, batteries are, are kind of uh, such a thing because you mm -hmm. can kind of be your own little generator or something right. like that. But so my work specifically was about using buildings as virtual batteries because mm. a building here, like, yeah. like this room, for example, uh -huh. uh, has in thermal inertia. Basically, mm -hmm. you, you kind of leverage the fact that there's thermal inertia. And so it feels like the air is off right now. I don't think, I don't know if we're getting any air, but suppose the air is blowing at some, some flow rate. If they were to reduce it by 5% for five minutes and then for the next five minutes, increase it by 5% so that we get the same total amount of cold air, same amount of cooling, we're not going to notice in this room because mm -hmm. the room's kind of big. That five percent is not that that big. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of crazy interactions happening happening anyway. We're not all that sensitive. We can't yeah. like, tell like, oh, it just changed by 0.1 degrees. Uh, so there's some some wiggle room there where you can shift your your consumption. You can use less, you know, at one time and use more at another time. And so in that way, you're your building can act like a battery because you know when you when you reduce the flow rate, that's like you're, uh, I guess, discharging the battery because you're using mm -hmm. less power, which would be the same thing as if I turned on a battery and started sucking power from the battery instead of the grid. The grid sees the same thing, less power. And then when you increase the flow rate back for the next five minutes, that's like charging your battery because the grid sees a higher uh, consumption. And so your buildings can be used as a, a virtual battery in that way. It's not a physical battery. It's not a lithium ion or anything like that. But you use this thermal inertia to uh, use the buildings so that it's like a battery. I kind of like to think of them as like negative generators. <laughs> your, your, your building can be like a generator, but but inverse <laughs> ne negative. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So and so yeah, and so it, it turns out what so the, the kind of the benefit of that over batteries is. Batteries are really expensive. You have to build a battery. The buildings yeah. already exist. They've been built. And see, it's in the name. They're, Basically, they're, they're you just buildings. have to add some algorithm. And so, thing. right, we, we have a lot of the infrastructure already there. Mm -hmm. So it's a very low-hanging fruit. You just need to add add the algorithm, maybe add some sensors, which that's costly, but not as costly as adding a huge mm -hmm. battery to every building. And we have a lot of buildings. And, and uh, you know, our HVAC is a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of thermal inertia to play with. And this seems really like a low hanging fruit. And it might be like a really novel idea, but my intuition tells me that somebody must have done it before, right? So what do you think it's being used a lot right now? And if not, why are the, well, why is 